Have you ever hated doing something and really you had no choice but to do it, but then later in your life, that thing that you dreaded ended up being a huge advantage for you? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share three leadership lessons that I learned as a kid sleeping on the floor in a sleeping bag every other weekend visiting my dad. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name's Ben Ward, and I've led sales teams for over two decades, and I like to talk about high performance in sales and leadership and how to draw out the very best in the people that you lead. And if you're responsible for inspiring, for motivating, and coaching your team to achieve high performance, and you wanna continue learning and growing as a leader, then this channel was created for you. Subscribe to the channel, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. I wanna hear from you either way. Listen, I hated rolling up my sleeping bag as a kid, but from it, I learned these three lessons I wanna share with you right now that changed everything for me. And these lessons can apply to you as well. So when my five brothers and sisters and I, we visited my dad's house every other weekend, there were 11 kids in the house. It is a pretty small 2,000 square foot home in Glendora, California. And it was a his, hers, ours kind of situation. So the, the five of us from my immediate brothers and sisters, we would go to my dad's and we would pull out our sleeping bags and uh, we slept on the floor. Oftentimes it was, it was the living room floor. I hated sleeping in a sleeping bag. And it wasn't even the hard floor or the bag itself, it was mostly because I hated rolling up my sleeping bag the next morning. And we couldn't leave them out because we were in the main living area of the house. So every single morning when I was with my dad, I was rolling up my sleeping bag. No matter how much I hated it, this problem wasn't going away with 11 kids in a small house. I did everything I could to delay rolling it up, I kicked, I screamed, I ignored it. I tried everything I could think of to not have to roll up this sleeping bag. In fact, I, I found ways to stuff it into the dining room hutch that it didn't fit into. And I've crammed it behind a couch, uh, under, under my stepsister's beds, hiding it in the laundry room, outside in the bushes. One time it got soaked. That's a story for another time. But these strategies didn't work. And my unrolled sleeping bag would always resurface and I eventually would have to roll it up. Now, after a couple years of this as a boy, the fight was exhausting. I, it was a, uh, mentally just, I hated it. It was a big pain and a stressor for me. And I'll never forget a major breakthrough I had one day when I decided I didn't want to stress about rolling up my sleeping bag all morning. So right when I woke up, I rolled it up. And the craziest thing happened. The stress of it went away as soon as it was rolled up right in the very beginning of the day, first thing in the morning. And I felt like I'd conquered the day. Kind of like what Tom Sawyer said, if you, if you know you're gonna have to eat a frog in a day, right? You're gonna have to eat this thing, so you might as well eat it first thing. Eat it right away, eat that frog, so that it doesn't wreck your whole day. So this is the first leadership lesson I learned as a kid rolling up my sleeping bag, was to eat the frog take care of this thing that I dreaded as fast as I could because I'm gonna have to do it no matter what anyways. That sleeping bag is gonna have to be rolled up to get it done. And I learned that I conquered the day right up front. And this lesson has served me well in sales and also as I grew into leadership roles. When I didn't wanna pound the pavement, when I was knocking on doors, when I didn't wanna go recruiting on college campuses day in and day out and get rejected all over the place, I would repeat to myself, eat the frog. And I would go and do that first thing. I would go to college campuses first thing and get that over with and win the day. In fact, I created a mantra in my sales offices to eat the frog and do feared things first. So my question for you, my friend, is what are the frogs in your life? What are the frogs in your career? I challenge you to eat the frog. Identify what the frogs are, the things that, that are important that you're gonna have to do that maybe you don't wanna do. Maybe they cause you anxiety or fear or panic or stress. But 
There's the things that move the needle, the things that have to get done, that will weigh you down until they get done. What are the frogs? I invite you to roll up whatever your sleeping bags are that you don't wanna do. Do them first and watch as you conquer the day on your way to achieving your goals. Okay, so the second lesson I wanna share with you. My brothers and sisters, I mean, it was obvious, they knew how much I hated, up, hated rolling up my sleeping bag. And in fact, as I look back, they probably hated it too, but they weren't as annoying as I was and making a big fuss about it. Well, I'll never forget one morning, I came into the living room of my dad's house and, you know, again, just dreading the chore, right? I'm like, oh, I have to do this and we roll this thing up. And when I caught my sister Rayla red-handed, rolling up my sleeping bag. I was stunned. I was like, what? What is she doing? Oh my goodness. And I'm like, I'm not gonna have to roll this thing up. I'll tell you, my like, my like fondness, my love, my respect for my sister Rayla just skyrocketed as I saw her just finishing up, rolling up my bag. This was the most meaningful way that she could have served me. And because she did this for me, there was a respect and a love that grew that's lasted to this day. And I found that this type of selfless service is one of the absolute keys to successful leadership. What are the most meaningful ways that you can serve the people that you lead? What are their sleeping bags that they'd hate rolling up, that if you help them out with, it would just mean so much to them? Do you know them well enough to know what their sleeping bags are and how to really meaningfully serve them in ways that just are highly impactful to them? Now, if you don't know the answer to this, this is a great place to start to create high level of influence as a leader. So the second lesson that I learned rolling up my sleeping bag was selfless service. And what are the most meaningful ways that you can serve the people that you lead? And here's a question for you. How can you serve someone right now that you lead, that's on your team, that's in your life, that you are a leader for? How can you serve them in a way that's meaningful to them? Kind of like my sister Rayla served me in the most meaningful way that she could at that time by rolling up my sleeping bag. All right, the third leadership lesson I wanna share with you that I learned rolling up my sleeping bag as a kid is that not everybody gets to have their own bed. <laughs> So, I mean, over a decade, I slept on the floor in the living room while I was visiting my dad every other weekend. And one night I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't sleep. And I stared up at a big giant bookcase that, that was just up there at my feet. And I wondered what was in it. And for the first time I noticed it was filled with some sort of books or something. I started like trying to figure out what it was. I couldn't actually, I didn't know really what it was. So the next day I asked my dad what was in this, this shelf, this bookcase. And, he opened up the glass and then he showed me a collection of books he had on tape. And he gave me one to listen to called Stinkin' Thinkin' by Dr. Gary Goodman. And that turned out to be one that, that uh, we listened to in his car when we drove around town. And it was all about getting rid of the word can't. And the, the stinkin' thinkin' is when we use the word can't. And in fact, this is where I learned a mantra that's meant so much to me to help try to delete this word, the stinking thinking out of my vocabulary. And I, I, I learned at that time at an early age that anytime you say the word can't, it's disempowering to you. And, and so there was this mantra that, that uh, I was introduced to. It's if, if you can't, you must. <laughs> and, so, and so this idea was planted in my mind that if I can't do something, well, I, well, I can't get up. Oh, I'm so tired, I can't get up. Oh my goodness, I heard that trigger word can't and I, I must, so I like, I gotta get up and pop up out of my bed. It was a challenge that in fact, with my sales teams in the future, we had this mantra, if I can't, I must. And we would challenge each other that anytime we heard the stinking thinking, the word can't, we'd like hit each other in the arm, and be like, ah, oh, you said it. And then whatever it was they said they can't do, now they have to do. <laughs> and so it was a challenge that, that, that we would challenge each other in, in, in our sales team. So this little book on tape was, the start of my obsession for learning through books on tape. And my, my dad would give me a few of these books and I'd take them and I'd, I'd listen to them and I'd bring them back the two weeks later when I'd come back and visit him and he'd load me up with more. And this cycle repeated for years. 
And it started when I was in middle school. And in fact, any time I was doing chores around the house, whether I was mowing the lawn or doing the dishes or vacuuming or cleaning my room, uh, you could find me with my, my little yellow Sony Walkman and a book on tape that I got from my dad with some hero like Brian Tracy or Tony Robbins or Earl Nightingale or like Napoleon Hill or Tom Hopkins or Dennis Waitley and like all the greats. And sleeping on the floor in that sleeping bag that I hated rolling up that next morning, sleeping at the foot of this bookcase has been one of the biggest advantages to my success in, in my sales and as a leader leading my teams over the years. Having the best mentors in the world teach me what it takes to succeed in life. And as, as I've filled my mind with their life lessons and I've tried to apply them, when I lost everything with one of my businesses, one of the, the, the first thoughts that came to my mind was something from Napoleon Hill that every failure brings with it a tiny seed of an equivalent advantage. And so like empowering thoughts came from these lessons in my life as I was in this time of rolling up my sleeping bag. And lesson one was eat the frog. Roll that sleeping bag up first thing and own the day. This also translates to all things in our personal and professional lives. What are the things in your life that will move the needle in the biggest way by jumping on them and taking care of them first thing to own and win and conquer the day? And lesson two, selfless service. How can you serve the people you lead in ways that are super meaningful to them? Like my sister Rayla did for me in rolling up my sleeping bag. And lesson three, not everybody gets to have their own bed, but this very thing could be the biggest advantage that you might ever have. Whatever it is in your life that was a little bit messed up, like maybe you know, maybe it wasn't sleeping on the floor in a sleeping bag for you, but whatever that was for you, this thing that's a little bit messed up in your life could become the biggest advantage that you have, your superpower above your competitors. Just like me sleeping at the foot of this bookcase in my sleeping bag at my dad's house every other weekend. Now I challenge you to eat the frog. Focus on selfless service and take those disadvantages that you may have in your life and turn those into your biggest opportunities. Now make it an incredible day and to your success. <laughs>